Julili's time in existence is slowly coming to a close. But before it takes one last dive into Jules' atmosphere and burns up forever, let's take a look back on how it actually got to the planet in the first place. So unlike Cassini that I'm blatantly ripping off and trying to pay tribute to in this video, um, Giulini made its way to Jewel via a direct transit. Um, Cassini actually made, I think, two flybys of Venus and one flyby of Earth before, and a flyby of Jupiter before reaching Saturn. This launch vehicle, thankfully, and obviously the smaller distances in the Kerbal Space Program universe, means that I can just make a direct transit to Joule using this launch vehicle and the fuel that's on board the spacecraft. So it's a lot more convenient than the real-life Cassini actually was to actually get to, uh, get to Joule. All of which is very good news for me because if you've watched any of my videos on gravity assists, my experience with them never really turns out very well. Of course, during its time at Joule, Giulini made many breakthrough discoveries. Now these included the presence of an oxygen atmosphere and liquid water oceans on the moon of Lathe, um, the discovery of an under sur a subsurface ocean on Val, and probably the most important and most groundbreaking of all, Discover discovery that Joule was, in fact, green. Of course, the real Cassini probe um, made very similar discoveries, such as the water jets coming out of Enceladus' south pole, which recently have been found to contain hydrogen, which means that it potentially has undersea vents, which provide the perfect conditions for life to form. It also carried the Cassini-Huygens probe, which became the first probe uh, to land on a body in the outer solar system in 2005. And it was European. Yes. Yes. Take that, NASA. Huygens took pictures such as the one that's been displayed on the screen right now and discovered a world that's very, very similar to the early Earth, at least what we believe anyway. And Cassini Huygens also confirmed the existence of liquid methane lakes, oceans and rivers on the surface of Titan, the only other known body in the solar system at the moment that has liquid on its surface, which is quite remarkable, I think. In fact, quick fun factoid about Titan, because of its low gravity and the fact that its atmosphere has a very, very high pressure, if human beings ever landed on the surface of Titan, you'd actually technically be able to swim through the atmosphere um, or fly just with your arms and legs. So yeah, cool fun little factoid there, but I digress. Giulini attempted to launch two Huygens-like probes when it got to Joule, which you're probably actually seeing right now. One was intended to hit the lathe, and the other to skim the atmosphere of Joule to provide scientific data on its composition and stuff like that. Neither of them really worked. The one that actually went to Joule did hit the atmosphere, but hit it too hard and burned up fairly quickly, as you'll see in a moment. And the one that was supposed to hit lathe got its trajectory confused due to the amazingly confusing nature of the conic system in Kerbal Space Program and ended up sort of missing completely and skipping off into deep space. But we'll gloss over that. The actual main mission was pretty much a success. I mean, any mission that's able to get beauty shots like that eclipse of uh, Lathe, I believe it was there over Joule, is definitely a good mission on uh, in on my point of view anyway. But you can see here, as we're coming down into the atmosphere of Joule, um, I forgot to provide any meaningful control systems on this, which meant we couldn't control ourselves, and of course it breaks apart completely. Um, not really sure how this sort of footage was filmed, bearing in mind most of the spacecraft sort of melted away uh, due to the extreme heat of Joule's atmosphere, but hey, it looks like it. piece of it did actually survive. Admittedly, it was the heat shield, but hey, it looks like we can actually descend to the surface of Joule and see what's what, even though there's no actual scientific data going on there. And of course, this did take a very long time, even at four times physics warp, but it does actually look kind of cool, especially with uh, the scatter mod installed. But alas, nothing can last forever, and we do eventually sort of blow up in spectacular fashion. So, of course, in case you didn't realise, this video is dedicated to Cassini because on September 15th, it will be launched into Saturn's atmosphere to burn up and hopefully gather some data on it as its final assignment before it sort of goes out of commission, if you know what I mean. The spacecraft's fuel supplies are running low, and so in order to prevent it from just being sort of left in a graveyard orbit around Saturn and risk it hitting Enceladus or any other potentially life-giving moons, NASA are making a deliberate attempt to crash it into the atmosphere of Saturn in order to prevent it from contaminating those moons. Because in the science of exploration and spaceflight, you can never be too careful. You don't want to 
magically implant aliens in places where they shouldn't be, for example. And alas, that's what we will be doing with Giulini at the end of this video in a few seconds. But now we're just reliving its orbital insertion into Joule and we got a lovely lathe flyby there with some really photogenic shots. Again, if you've got the horsepower, please install Scatterer and EVE. It makes a world of difference. I say this every video. But now we're going to start some of these sweeping dives, so to speak, that Sat uh, Cassini will be making through Saturn's rings um, towards the end of its life. In fact, I believe they started about a week ago. Um, let's just pretend that 12 years has skipped forward now in the Giulini timeline. But without further ado, it's time to say goodbye. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one. We are, we are, we are the universe. Don't forget that. Castle Solstice above me, a new planet discovery. No sun revolves around you only. How could you think that you're lonely?